Hey everybody, welcome to my workshop. Uh, let me start off by telling you that I'm going to be playing a little bit here. You're going to see some hum and distortion. I got a couple of yard sale cheap amps and my workshop is fed by a 100 foot extension cord about that big around so don't expect much. A couple of episodes ago I did uh, one on wiring a coil pickup. Uh, I said back then that I was going to do another video on uh, how to wire a piezo pickup. Piezo, piezo, uh, I don't want to see a hundred comments below and have a, an Italian lesson on any of this, but at the end of the day, it's P-I-E-Z-O. Now, the coil works. Uh, this is a coil. It works by uh, magnets being surrounded by a wire uh, that's continuous for 10,000 wraps or so. And then when you strum the guitar, it's sensitive to the space between the strings and the magnets. That's basically how that works. The piezo is a brass disc with a ceramic uh, piece on top that's wired and it reads vibrations. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, that while we're wiring on the bench, but there's a distinct difference in the sound. Most of the gu guitars that I build have both and they're on separate jacks so you can hook them into separate amps or run sep separate wireless units to your amps or even have an amp that has several channels so you can get that old sound you can get the uh, electric guitar sound or you can blend them to one extent or another with one by using these uh, volume controls that are typical to my guitars now again remembering that I am a terrible untrained guitar player I want to kind of give you an example of the difference between the coil and the piezo and how they sound and then ultimately we'll blend them together first let's hear the coil it, it, it's got that warmer elect, electric guitar sound now let's try the piezo and see what it sounds like Did you hear that real twangy versus? Now I'm going to blend them a little bit and that's where the vers versatility of my guitars comes in at. I've got the piezo on and I'm going to kick on the coil here and leave the piezo on. Now I can, you can turn the coil off you wouldn't hear any of that but it gives you the ability to blend things so let's go to the workbench I'll show you how to wire up one of these piezos and give you a little uh, hint or two about where to put them on the box because again they read by vibration they they create their sound by vibration so let's hit the workbench Now you'll remember a couple videos ago again I uh, did a it was called how to wire a coil pickup uh, and uh, we did one like this um, this time we're talking about a piezo uh, now again the difference we've got magnets surrounded by wire with two leads um, here we've got one of these is just a brass disc with a piece of ceramic on it with a hot or red wire onto the ceramic and a ground or black wire uh, to the edge of the uh, brass circle. Now buy these in bulk if you're going to make guitars because it's a lot cheaper for you. Now I'm opening up this guitar so we can see on the inside what's going on here. We've got two volume controls. We've got a coil right here and it's under the neck there. And then we've got the piezo disc right here. 
next to where the bridge is. Um, uh, we've got two volume controls going to two jacks. And the main difference here really is that the piezo, the uh, copper disc, doesn't need to be grounded. And that's why a lot of people start out using just a piezo. It gives you a nice rustic sound and they're pretty easy to wire. Okay, so we'll put this one aside and focus on the guitar that I'm building right now. And I'm going to show you how I put the piezo on here. Oh, just so you know, uh, I'll give you a couple hints. Uh, look for this guitar in an episode called History Lesson. Uh, you're going to see this and this again. I've been waiting to build this uh, guitar for a while. It, it will go to somebody as well. Um, but again, it'll be called History Lesson. Before we get into this piezo uh, installation, I want to remind you that the coil installation video, uh, if you look in the upper right screen of uh, the video here, you're going to see an eye pop up and you'll hear references to other videos and things. So if you see something pop up that says coil, there will be a link to how we did that in case you're interested. Now I've done the usual stuff with this one. I found the center line. I found where the neck's going to be cut out. I've put the sound holes in uh, and done that. But the most important thing here is I'm using that floating bridge setup where I've taken the adjuster screws. Uh, again, there's a video about this, uh, how to build a cigar box guitar floating bridge. Look at the links there on the right that's popping up that letter I and you'll find that if you're interested. But anyway, uh, I've mounted these onto the top of the box using the posts that come with one of these when it comes to you when you buy it and sunk those down into the top of the box and what that does for me is it tells me where my baseline is where my bridge is going to be uh, this is going to be a 25 and a half scale so I'm going to measure 25 and a half inches that way and it will tell me where to put the nut on the neck but anyway as we flip this over I can see exactly where that is and since all my hardware for the uh, bridge is going to be on top like so I've got this open spot right here which is a perfect spot to install the piezo right here as long as I get the wiring out of the way and if I do this correctly uh, I can put it here here or here I can sink this down into this just a bit and the piezo will be right under the bridge and that's going to give me the best sound. Now most of my guitars uh, are played by people who use a finger uh, picking style where they've got a big thumper string playing the bass over here and then uh, two or three other strings. I like building uh, four string guitars. Oh, by the way, while I got, I got you here on that to topic, you can always run three strings on a four string guitar. But if you have somebody make you a guitar that's only got three strings and the day comes where you want to make it four, uh, that's real difficult. So if you're torn in the middle about it, go ahead and get the four string made. Anyway, my big thumper string is going to be over here. And usually those are tuned pretty loose. Um, uh, they're not very tight and they create a lot of vibration. So you want to remember that the other three strings less so they're tuned higher. There's a little bit more tension on those uh, for lack of a better way of explaining that. But anyway, so when I turn this over, I'm going to want my piezo to go more towards the, the lighter strings because if I put it towards the big string, uh, it's going to buzz a lot more. It may even drown out uh, the sound I'm going to get out of the uh, light string side of the bridge. So, remembering this is a right-handed guitar, I'm going to drill a little pilot hole about right here with a small drill bit. Like so. Not too deep. I do not want to go through the box. And then I'm going to put on a Forstner bit that's just a tad bigger than the piezo. And that Forstner bit, by drilling right here, like so, notice that I've, I've painted this. You want to identify as many of your tools 
uh, by color coding or numbering or something like that or putting them in specific places so your builds go fast. But anyway, I'm going to take this Forstner bit and drill down a little bit so this is inset into just below the top of the box. Again, we want to be careful. We don't want to go through the whole box. Okay, there we go. So what I've got now is I've got this with enough room to sit down in there and put a little hot glue on and it will sit there. Only problem I've got right now is that wire could be crimped. There's going to be two wires coming off here. So I'm going to figure out where I need to cut a little groove in so those wires aren't damaged. Well, something I want to show you here is, as you look at this piezo, it's really flat, but these wires stick up about a quarter of an inch. And since this is going to be sitting inset under the neck here, if those wires are sticking up and getting mashed, there's a likelihood that they're going to come loose. And so what I've done is I've cut a little channel right next to where the piezo is going to sit. Once that is glued in with hot glue, the neck will go right over and these wires will come out here. And that's really simple to do. You just put a, a, a bit on there and then lay it in there and carefully do this until you've got a little trench or channel or whatever you want to call it for the wires to come out from underneath the neck and you do your wiring to your volume controls which will be right here okay now making sure that everything's flat i'm just going to put a tad of glue there and there a couple on the edges like this and i want to let that set up and make sure it's firm before I coat the, whole, coat the whole thing in hot glue up to here. Once it's set up, I'm going to go around this whole thing and fill it up with hot glue. And I'm going to make sure that includes these wires going back in that little channel I cut with the drill. There we go. Lick my finger so I don't burn it. Take my soldering sponge. Put it on a piece of wood, get that wet, and then mash that down to make sure that it's flat where the neck goes. Perfect. Not pretty, but simple and effective. You end up with the piezo right under the lighter strings, directly under the bridge, and on between the box lid and the neck. like so. Now you're going to remember uh, this mock-up from the last video about wiring uh, pickups, the one about the coil. Again, there's a link uh, to that all the way through this video. But we've got the volume potentiometer and I've turned this stuff upside down so you can see what it would look like uh, that would be the top of the box and the side of the box. Anyway, I've turned this over so you can see everything. Volume pot has three lugs that I've labeled one, two, and three. And you want to remember that there's a little tab that sits here that locks this in place that you're going to want to drill a hole for when you put that in. But again, volume potentiometer or volume control has lug one, two, and three. Uh, we've got the uh, jack. Uh, it has a short uh, uh, connection point and a longer connection point. Uh, we know that the short one is the hot wire or positive and that the black one is the ground wire or negative. Uh, and then instead of the coil that we had up here last time, we've got the two leads from the piezo that we've already uh, put into our box like that. So these leads are coming out. And we'll use this mock-up to show you how to do this. As always, I use a green wire for ground or negative and red wire for hot or positive. 
So before I get started here, I'm using uh, my sponge that's wet to make sure that the tip of my soldering iron stays uh, clean. We don't put solder on there and then go from go from the tip of the soldering iron to our connection. Instead, we heat up the connection area like so. And then this is called tinning. So we're going to go and tin this and put a little bit of solder on all these connections and heat them up uh, before we start putting wires on. And that way they're primed and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a red wire onto the short connection of the jack like so and I'm going to solder that up. Now I almost forgot uh, just like in the video uh, that I did about the coil when you're making these connections you always want to take a short piece of heat shrink and slip it on the wire before you start soldering everything that way when it's soldered we're just going to put that over the connection and these two will never touch each other and that's really important okay so I've soldered that up and now I'm going to take that piece of heat shrink and slip it over there uh, I'm going to do this one in a bit anyway we're going to do the same thing there uh, once I get both of these uh, the heat shrink on then I'll melt it and we'll be good to go now this wire the other end of the hot wire coming from the jack is going to go to the number two uh, lug or the center lug on the volume potentiometer and I'm going to want to work that center lug first so I can get it out of the way and that'll make it easier to do these. I don't want to be doing these and then working over the top of everything with a soldering iron. So let's get that hooked up. Okay, there we go. That's soldered up. Got another piece of heat shrink here. I'm going to slip that, that down over there. Uh, so number two goes to the hot on the jack. Next, I'm taking the hot wire or red wire off of the piezo and I'm going to always remember to put that piece of heat shrink right there and I bent the wire over here like so and now I'm going to attach it to the number three or top lug of the volume pot right there. Okay, there we go hot wire from the piezo to the number three or outside top lug and there's our piece of shrink heat shrink now it's going to be time to hook up two ground wires one is going to go from the number one lug the bottom lug on the volume pot right back to the top of the or excuse me the bottom of the volume pot so I'm gonna make sure that my tinning is right here and I'm gonna connect this and bend this up and make it go to right there it's a little short connection let's see what that looks like when I'm done now I've taken a green or ground wire again this could be black I always use green some people use black for ground wires from the lower lug the number one lug uh, uh, soldered to that connection and then just ran a short jumper to the bottom of the pot. I'm going to ground the, uh, the black wire coming off of the piezo, this wire, to the top of the volume pot. Alright, the ground wire coming off of the piezo is done. I'm going to put a little bit of solder right there because I've got one more connection to make and that's the ground wire negative wire coming off the jack and that also has to ground uh, to this side of the volume pot where all the grounding takes place all right there we go so our last connection from the negative on the coil to the grounding area on the volume pot okay brief recap volume pot one two three lugs Jack, two lugs, hot and ground. Piezo, hot wire, ground wire. The piezo wires, ground wire goes to the uh, bottom of the pot, which appears to be the top here. Hot wire goes to the third or top lug. Hot wire from the 
Jack goes to number two and the number one on the volume pot uh, grounds back into itself. The ground wire from the piezo and the ground wire from the guitar jack ground here. And you'll have the opportunity here this particular setup in the future when uh, these pop up on the screen again. All right, there we go. That was pretty simple. Um, as always, I appreciate your support of my channel. And don't forget at the end of the video, you're going to see a couple boxes come up. Those are either videos or uh, links to playlists so you can see all my videos. Right in the middle of that round one lets you subscribe. So click on one of those if you care to. As always, I appreciate your comments, even the bad ones. I, you know, sometimes you need a laugh out of life. But uh, comments, likes, and subscriptions, I really appreciate that.